garage, but only for a little bit. We're going to be outside shortly. What am I doing today? Putting some primer on this. It's going to be a high, high build urethane primer sealer. Uh, we're going to mix it up and uh, shoot some on this. I've given this a good wipe down with some uh, glass cleaner to get the organics off of it and then uh, rub it with some uh, wax and grease remover after I move it out there. Gets rid of my fingerprints and stuff like that too. And uh, then we'll shoot it. And why am I shooting it outside? Because my garage is attached to my house and my wife uh, doesn't like toxic fumes getting in the house. I don't, know, I don't know what that's about, but you know. So we're gonna do it outside and we're gonna do it uh, in the gravel because it's the only place I got to. But it's okay because this is made to sand. So we're gonna be sanding a lot of this off. It's just gonna, it's gonna hide all the little scratches and stuff. This, this has already been sanded it down to about 220, but uh, that high build is going to fill everything in, and we'll sand it one more time. And we're not going to sand it down to 400 like I, I've done the, the fenders and stuff, because we changed our plan. And, and it's kind of my wife changed her plan. We were, we were out and about, and uh, we saw a, uh, a rig down in... Uh, Sand Hollow, Utah, at the off-road games, and we it was done with a you know bed liner, and it was fairly smooth. It wasn't done with the really rough stuff, and it looked cool, and my wife liked it, so that was my catalyst right there to say, all right, bed lining this thing, because it's going to go out in the sand, and, and it's going to go through the sagebrush and and out there. Of course, you try not to run over the, the foliage, but it it hits it occasionally, and I didn't want to have to keep repairing scratches so hopefully the rhino liner will look all right it's going to be a green ish color and uh repairing scratches will be super simple if it scratches at all and i don't have to get the body down to the, the fine nuts to use it because it it won't be uh perfectly the rhino liner won't be perfectly flat it won't show any of the little dings or, or scratches after it's painted and uh, that's what we're going to do. We're going to actually spray it with a, my, one of my guns here. The same gun I actually spraying the high build primer on because it's got a 2-0 tip which is a big ass tip. Dumps a lot of product but it'll be great for the rhino liner. So it's okay that I'm doing it outside because it's going to hide that little those imperfections, no problems. So that's what we're going to do. Let's get to it. There we go. Now I can see out here in the sunlight there's tons of scratches, which is fine. Little pits. These these are actually not scratches. They're marks in the paint, but they're not in there. Alright, we're gonna go mix up some paint and uh, blow this off right before we spray. I got a little little tape and plastic on here because the underside is already painted. And uh, I haven't clear coated the underside yet, so if I screw it up, make some make a mess up or something, no problem. I'll just hit it again with the color, and then I can give it a light sanding and clear it. But uh, that's the reason the tape's there. So be right back. All right, this is the gun we're going to be using to shoot it. It's a uh, Master H. P Pro Series. It's just a cheap gun, but I, I like the looks of it, and it sprays pretty good. And it has a great big tip, so that's what we need for our high build urethane primer surface or sealer gray. This is, says shake it a bunch. I've already shook it a bunch. I'll shake it some more. I'll stir it some more. We're going to pour it into one of these cups. We're going to use a 
four and one and one, which according to the instructions here makes this a sealer. But when I go over the the mixing ratios, the high build ratio is also um, basically the same. It says 15% uh, 4, 1, and 15% reducer. This is 4, 1 activator and 1 reducer. And when you look at the cup and you go to the 4, 1, and 1 section, you see that the graduation between 1 and 1 and 1 is the 20% it says on the side for the high build. It's also uh, the low end of the high mix. So it doesn't seem like, I mean, it says high mix, high build, and sealer mixes, but they're basically all the same. If you fudge just a little bit one way, it's a, the high mix. If you go to the limit of the other way, it's the high build and the sealer, and they're both the same mix ratios. The, that 20% is the same as adding another one part in the 4 to 1, one to 1 mix. So that's what we're going to do. Use one of these setups here. They're kind of nice when you're done you just throw this part away. It does have a built-in filter already so we we don't need to use filters. My paint stand over here is, is pretty well just holding the paint gun. I don't know if you can see that there but uh, so we'll get going here. This plastic on here, I put it on every time just because it makes it um, makes me feel secure that it's sealed. So when I shake it, it doesn't go all over. So I keep it, put it on when I'm done. Oh, and also spray this with a mask. And if you don't have good ventilation, mix it with your mask on. It is a urethane, it does have a lot of nasties in it. It's very thick. So, stir, 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 shake, 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 stir, stir, stir. I don't know what the rules are or what the, the uh, product data sheet says it's supposed to be done, but <clears throat> I just, I've been shaking it off camera and uh, till my arms got tired. And so now I'm stirring it till my hand gets tired and that's not gonna take very long because it's very thick. And to pour it, I saw this on, uh, I think it's Kevin Tate's video, but he uses tape along the edge of the can. To make a V, let's put a little bit more on here because I kind of missed the edge. To make a V to where he pours it out of. And then he just peels the tape off when he's done. I thought that was really cool, and I tried it the other day, and it works, so yay. Because I always make a mess down the side of my can, and then I have to go wipe it off. Duck down so you can see the top of my head while I grab a bunch of rags, just in case. And now I'm going to pour it in. We're going to go three parts. I used two parts on the front grill, and it used every bit of it. And the hood is bigger, so we're going to go at least three parts. And then we'll do three parts reducer, and we'll do three parts activator. And that will give us our mix proper ratio for the high build and also the sealer. So let's consider it both. All right, let's go. See what happens. When you're pouring paint this thick, it actually builds a little mound in the cup. And so if you slow down and let it let the paint settle out to your mark, that makes a much, much better measurement. Much easier to get right to the spot. So let me show you how well that works. Get my tape off here. 
Well, it didn't work as well as it did last time. I didn't get my tape pushed down well enough, I think. So I got tape up on the edge. All right, so that was a fail that time. I got a lot of paint around the edge. I hate that. I'm not going to get it off of this one. This one's all covered with paint. Paint stick holding tool. See if I can clean that paint out of there so I can put the lid on it. I'm just running the, the butt end of a another paint stick through the through the groove and it tends to push the paint up and out. I need to put it back in the can or catch it with my rag. Because I want this to seal well. I, I want to keep using this. This is not cheap. It's not expensive, but it's Definitely not cheap. So let's put the lid back on that. Oh, my fingers look great, don't they? Put the plastic ring back on because it makes me feel better about it. Sort of gives it a finished seal there. This is a reducer, medium. I could use fast, but because it's cold out today, but uh, it's about 50 something, uh, 55 or 60, getting close to 60. It's supposed to get up there today. So I could use a fast, but using a uh, one step lower than the temperature allows your paint to flow out a little better. I think so right now we're at the first three we're going to the second three because I'm doing I'm doing a four to one mix but in three steps three one and one so there's there's three of the primer in here three of the reducer and then the activator. And I'm gonna go, go put on my mask for the, wow, this is just wonderful. I wanna mix the activator, cause that's when it really starts to stink, so. Oh, you know what we should do? Let's check our gun pressure before we get some paint in it. I have a little bitty regulator here. I'm gonna be switching up my delivery system sometime in the future. This is a water trap, water and dust. I got about 60 pounds coming through the hose because I don't want to over pressurize this. In fact, I can see it right there. There's 60 there. That was a little cleaner from using it yesterday. So you make sure that's all out. That's about 20 at the tip, or 20 in the gun, flowing pressure. And for the thick, high build primer this is, that's what we're gonna need to get it out there. So that's good. Now for the activator. Before I get to that, let's talk paint for just a second. I'm not an expert, but I've done it for years, at least some of it, some things. And it's always recommended to use the same brand activator and reducers as the paint you're using. That way everything works together. It's a known, known product. You're not taking any risk to doing anything strange or different. Now my reducer is a different brand, but what I've found over the years is the reducer is the one thing that r really doesn't seem to make a difference no matter what brand it is. I've used a lot of different brands. Um, I'm cheap, so I keep what I have, 
from one job and I use it on the next job and I use it on the next job until it's out and then I buy new. And that does and I don't care what paint I'm using it with, the reducer works. And and I've used a lot of different brands of reducers. I'm not saying any of these are the are the, the go-to. Um, but the activator should match your product. I'm, I'm a firm believer in that. I've used different activators with different products. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. And, and that sometimes it doesn't is a real pain in the butt. So don't do that. Use the right activator for your paint. Use whatever reducer you have, so long as it's, if this is a urethane paint, this should be a urethane reducer. If this is an epoxy, it should be an epoxy reducer. It doesn't seem to matter the brand, at least in my experience. So there you go. Um, also, don't do what I do. Um, do whatever you like. Because if it gets screwed up, I'm not responsible. That's my disclaimer. All right, we need one part activator. And this is where the paint time is critical. This doesn't start heating or anything else until the activator. Use the butt end of that one. All right, you've got to mix this well. It's really thick. You can feel the thickness of the primer on the bottom. So you're trying to get the reducer and the activator to all mix in. Don't skimp. Don't just put this on your gun and start spraying. Stir it. You've got time. I mean, it's not going to flash off right here, right now. So stir, stir, stir. Stir it with your left hand if you want. Go counterclockwise, really messes up the equilibrium of the world. Go back clockwise, the way it's supposed to be on this side of the equator. Go back the other way, mess with everybody. Let's call that good. Right, I'm going to change out my gloves. I'll be right back. Holding it upside down. I don't know if you can see this, but whatever that red is, is bleeding through the primer sealer. So we'll let this flash off. We'll hit it a couple more times. And uh, actually, we're only going to hit it one more time. I'm going to have to mix up a new mix. Because that almost sucked us dry. got some sag lines right here but I can still see it's very light so that was from previous paint because I didn't do much prep work on this but we're gonna we're gonna fix everything this is a good uh, good coat to let me see what I need to fix before I could just spray rhino liner and you wouldn't see nothing but there's a few things I'm gonna fix I'm gonna fix that little mark 
I'll sand this. The high build will just get rid of those. The two little dents on that side I'll fix. And uh, yeah, then it'll be good. But I'm going to go uh, shoot this. And mix up a little bit more. Shoot it again. But uh, that's it for now. Pretty easy to do. Doing it out here because it's all going to be sanded. Looks really clean right at the moment. So I'll show it to you later. Thanks for watching. Oh, and get out there and work on your stuff.